Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. The world is such a strange place right now. I hope that this video, which won't be on the air for another couple weeks, finds us all in a good place. This question comes from Larry Logsdon, WD8MWS. He says, I'm going to install a dipole antenna. Okay, green. I have a wooden fence and a chain link fence that is going to run directly underneath in the same way the dipole will be installed. Okay, remember the first rule of antennas is that everything affects everything. So that chain link fence is going to affect your dipole. My question is, should the hot leg or center of the coax go over the chain link fence or the wooden fence? Uh, I'm not sure I understand that particular question. Plan on using a one-to-one -one ballon, which is fine. And how do I determine the hot leg on the output of the ballon? Okay, you've been doing household wiring for too long. In household wiring, you've got a plug with a large and a smaller one, and often a ground plug down here. This one right here is the neutral. This is the ground, and this is the hot. Okay, and this one is usually black. Okay, this one is white, and this one is green wire ground. Okay, or just bare copper. This goes back to the panel, and the panel is the only single point where the ground and the neutral are connected together. Okay, so no electricity should flow in the ground. It should flow in the neutrals. If something flows in the ground, this is your ground fault interrupter or GFI will cause this to trip the breaker because something is wrong. Okay, that's house wiring. Now let's talk about amateur radio wiring at RF. There are two ways you can do it. You can do the coax, and here is the wire coming out of the coax. There is a shield, and there is a center conductor. The shield is, in theory, grounded. Okay, so it's, it's not the neutral, it's ground. Okay. And the center is what you could have called the hot if you wanted to. By the time you get out a bunch of feet away, it starts to get a little bit more balanced. But let's look at balanced wire line going out to a dipole. And often this is window line. So it's got these weird looking windows in it uh, just to save in the amount of plastic and weight. Okay. This is balanced. If this is plus, this is negative. If this goes negative, this goes positive. If this goes positive, this goes negative. They're opposite each other. Neither one is grounded. Okay? They're balanced. It's a balanced line, like a balanced audio line, if you use the three-plug uh, Amphenol connectors. Okay? So... Um, there is no hot, there is no neutral, there is no ground in this case here, okay? So if you feed this with a coax and you've got a ballon, one to one ballon, and they go out like that, often the center conductor, okay, is connected directly to one of these and there will be a plus on there. That means nothing. It just means there's a direct connection. But this is balanced over here. And this is unbalanced over here. That's the whole point of a balance. Balanced to unbalanced. Balun. Okay. Balanced to unbalanced. Okay, now let me show you what's inside the ballon and why that is the case. Okay, 
you've got usually wound around a toroidal core some um, windings and okay and you've got the center will connect uh, there's, sometimes there's a second winding in here the center conductor will be directly connected to this and that's why they put the plus there just so you know where it is okay there are many different ways to make these balance work okay so uh, the point being you've got this chain link fence here and it's got all the you know gobbledygook and then you have a wooden fence here which has got all the vertical boards and whatnot okay and a chain link over here now it sounds like your dipole is going to be mounted above this by above I hope you mean several feet above I would take now along the top of this chain link fence is what's called top rail steel it's very cheap it fits one ten and a half foot section fits right into the end of the next one and so you can guy it up here and get about 21 feet off the ground which you'll guy that then you can run your dipole like this okay now your coax comes along here I'd recommend running the coax on the ground okay and then coming up to the antenna and you've got some sort of a hookup over there you can strap this to the bottom rail well there's not a bottom rail is there well there's something that holds that stuff together anyway keep it down here low uh, and then it'll connect up here if you put a ballon here then it doesn't matter which side is over the chain link fence. Now this is going to affect the radiation pattern of the ballon. And here's what's going to happen. You've got your chain link fence here and you've got your wooden, wood is brown, over here. Okay. And you've got your uh, dipole running this way, just above them, okay? The center is uh, wherever the center is, okay? And they're held up in the air like 20 feet, something like that. Okay, you're going to get a radiation pattern that instead of the traditional dipole donut, you're going to skew it in the direction of that big chunk of metal so it's going to skew a little bit this way that's exaggerated okay that's because of the metal that's right in there so you're going to get your pattern is not going to go quite straight out from the sides of the dipole but will tend to focus a little bit in that direction. That's not a bad thing. Um, there are hams in every direction that you can talk to and the back angle of it's not going to be too bad either. Now, I hope you're not intending on running that dipole right over the fence. But when you talk about over the fence, 20 feet up, please. Rule number two of antennas, height matters. Okay, get it up. If you put a side of that dipole over the fence, it will couple to the fence and you'll have a, a, a mess. Okay? So, um, if you put a ballon in here, it depends on the type of ballon. I mean, some ballons, if it's a choke ballon, it's not going to have a plus or minus at all. But if it's got a plus over here, it doesn't matter where you put it because it turns out that the output is balanced. This is just for convenience tracing through to the center conductor 
from a DC point of view, okay? Um, not RF. RF, it's balanced. Okay, I've shown this a couple different ways. Let's try this way. If you've got parallel lines, when the electricity flows this way, this over here flows this way. And when this flows this way, this over here flows this way. Okay, they're balanced. They're going opposite each other. Now, one of the nice things about balanced line is it picks up very little noise because um, it's balanced. Most noise is not. So um, if you take a coax, and if it's good coax, please buy good coax. Don't buy RG58. Yuck. Um, RG8X, uh, uh, RG213, LMR240, LMR400. These are both a pain to deal with, but they're very nice. Coax, uh, very good. By the way, they're made by Times Microwave. Make sure that if you buy this from somebody, it's actually made by Times Microwave. There are lots of imitators, Chinese. Uh, I once, uh, once, I still have a friend who uh, wanted me to help him put uh, connectors on his LMR 400. He was very proud of his LMR 400. And I went over to his house and it wasn't even the right size for LMR 400. And the center conductor in LMR 400 is aluminum coated with copper, which is fine because the aluminum needed to get you the right size you need for the wire strength, and they use the correct type of aluminum that will bend and stuff like that. Um, and because RF tends to flow on the surface of a conductor, the copper on the outside gives it a little bit. Aluminum's not bad for carrying uh, electricity, but copper's slightly better. The problem I had with him was every time I'd try and do it, the aluminum center conductor would just snap off in my fingers. Just snap off. It's truly not LMR 400. It's some cheap Chinese imitation where they're using the wrong kind of aluminum. They're not using the kind of aluminum that can bend and be rebent. They're using the kind of aluminum that shatters when you bend it. Wrong stuff. Get good coax. After all, it is carrying your signal and the signal of others to hear you. Okay, now in this right here, when this does this, this does nothing. When this does this, this does nothing. Okay, this is truly grounded, and then you have this doing its own thing back and forth. Now, um... That's fine. That's an unbalanced line. It's very commonly used, and there is definitely a ground and a uh, hot. There's no neutral to speak of, not in this, because uh, RF doesn't work that way, and we don't use the electrical wiring um, paradigm of hot, neutral, and ground. Okay, that's electrical AC wiring for a very, 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 very low frequency of 60 hertz. Okay, we're up in the high frequency range. Have I got everything? Okay, go over the chain link fence, the wooden fence. It doesn't matter. It won't matter if you're using a ballon. If you are using a ballon and you want, well, I don't know. It's, it's pretty much balanced by the time it gets there. So I hope that, that, Larry, that answers your question, gives you a little something to work with. Please get the antenna itself up off the fences, okay? And those chain link fence top rail pieces are like 15, 20 bucks each at um, Home Depot or Lowe's. Lowe's, I think you can actually get 20 foot long ones. Uh, Home Depot, I think you can only get 12, or uh, they're like 10 and a half feet. 
So there you have it. If you'd like to help support this channel financially, you may do so at decastlercom slash support. Also, please check out our giveaway at decastlercom slash giveaway for the latest thing that's being given away. Also, um, please comment. Please click like. And until we next meet, 73.